Everyone, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Brand Power Analysis. And today, our special guest, Derek Cox, why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? Well, thank you for having me, Zach. It's a pleasure to be up here on the podcast and uh, an honor. So uh, for myself, I am currently in graduate school. Uh, prior to being in graduate school at UCLA, getting my MBA, I was uh, playing professional football and I was playing for uh, a number of teams. I had a, a seven year career and played for the Jacksonville Jaguars, San Diego Chargers, uh, Minnesota Vikings, Baltimore Ravens, and the New England Patriots. And so uh, the career that I had, uh, you know, uh, it was an, a great experience and one for me where it helped shape and form what I'm pursuing after now with my career. And so long story short, just as a player and having that experience and, and being a part of it, I, I really realized that what I want to do is make that career that I thought I was going to have something attainable for, for other players and, you know, for guys to get more out of their playing days on the field. So for me, I'm, I'm looking at getting into the player representation side and I, and I like the sports marketing side and being on uh, the, the side of just helping the athlete in general with that total uh, NFL contract that they will have that career that they're going to take on and, and and gaining the most on the field but gaining the most off the field as well that's great why don't you tell us a little bit about your journey as, as a player and, and how that kind of and I know you kind of summarized it a little bit there but how that how that kind of what kind of thought process went through your mind as you kind of went through um and nothing we're not we're not going to bash the shield or anything but uh you know <laughs> but uh like the transitions that you went through and the thought process, how your thought process changed from, you know, being a player and as you went cl getting close to retirement and things of that nature. Yeah. And I'll go back to college and I can recall being in college uh, and recruiting or well, going through the recruiting process with agents. So I had the opportunity to go and play professional football. So I'm sitting now interviewing agents trying to figure out, okay, who, do I want to represent me and help me with my journey, you know, through the NFL? And, and, and so while I'm doing that and I'm sitting there interviewing agents, you know, for me, it was, it was a bit of uncertainty about this whole NFL thing, because it's just like, well, I know the odds. I know the numbers, the statistics behind how long a career may last. And so I'm sitting there and, and I'm coming from a small school. I went to William and Mary, in Virginia, and that is a small division, one double A school. We play in the football championship series and not a ton of guys are going from, you know, my, my division to the NFL. So for me, it's just like, okay, there's this opportunity, but who knows how it's gonna pan out. I'm sitting here talking to these agents, but I don't know who to select. And what's gonna make me most comfortable is to be with somebody that I feel can help me be a success no matter what, whether I make it to the NFL or not, you know, who can help me be a success. And so school was important, you know, because I realized that, Hey, football isn't going to last forever. So being at William Mary, tremendous, great education. And, you know, coming away from that school with a degree puts me in a position to, uh, you know, sustain myself post-college. And I, I majored in business. And so for myself, it was like, yeah, who can help me be successful whether or not I make it in the NFL? And so going to the NFL and having that career, you know, I was always thinking, what is next? What about the transition? I want to be able to be a player that can transition smoothly from the game. I want to be somebody that doesn't come face to face with the statistics of it taking, you know, years and years and years to transition. It being a situation where guys are bankrupt. You know, guys are financially distressed. And so for myself, it was just, OK, who can I find that will help me do that? And let me and while I'm doing that, OK, uh, <clears throat> I need to be thinking about what's next. How do I transition? And so during the course of that whole NFL career, you know, I'm thinking how to transition, trying to do things to make sure that I'm transitioning or that I will transition properly. And, you know, over the course of that 
NFL career, I entered into my second contract at some point. So I finished up four years with the Jacksonville Jaguars and I'm going into my second contract. And this is, you know, I'm, 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 I'm between the New Orleans Saints and the San Diego Chargers. And, and I select to go with the San Diego Chargers. But during that process, I was like, you know, uh, I think I want to get into that role as an agent. I want to get into that role as an agent and to be a force for my players to where I can really help them do exactly what I was trying to do, transition seamlessly from the game and and really be an advocate, a, a, a resource, an advisor, a consultant for the player so that when they get done or while they're playing that game, uh, while they're playing that game, they're getting the most out of that career. But when they're ready to transition from the game, it's not something that you try to do once you decide to retire. No, transitioning from the game starts from the day you step into the NFL. You're transitioning. And so that whole experience for me in the NFL, going through a career and trying to figure out how to transition, I realized that, yeah, the best place to be effective with the player is on that sign as his agent, because you are in his corner. You're the person that he, that player is going to trust the most. And you're going to be able to have that influence on him to help guide him and help him navigate that NFL career. And so that whole experience really opened my eyes to, yes, like, being on that side of an agent. And when I say, you know, as an agent, like I look at myself being effective on the side of negotiating contracts and also uh, representing players for marketing opportunities as well, because that's what I am specialized. That's what I majored in in college mm -hmm. uh, marketing with the, you know, a, a business or business administration with a concentration in marketing. And then here getting my MBA at UCLA, I'm specializing in marketing. So I want to be effective for the guys on both of those frontiers as negotiating contracts and then also uh, being a marketing representative and finding those opportunities for them so that collectively you help that player get the most on the field and get the most off the field. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a tricky thing these days. One of the reasons I kind of got into this myself is because the digital market is growing so much. Um, and so many of these uh, sports marketing agencies that are out there right now, um, they don't really focus on, on not just the passion around what the athlete wants as a sponsor, but they don't really think about it in terms of the ROI when it comes to the sponsors themselves. And so there's a connection, there's, there's definitely a connection there when it comes to trying to find a good sponsorship, not just from an ROI standpoint from the, the sponsor opportunity, but finding some, finding actual sponsorship opportunities to relate to the athlete themselves. What helps the athlete? What, what are they passionate about? What is stuff that they use on a day-to-day -day basis that helps them with what they're doing, not just in, in, in the game, but also with their existing transition. So I definitely think it's cool what you're doing. And I think that there's, there's definitely a, there's definitely a huge opportunity to um, really focus that marketing degree that you're getting your, your MBA right now. Um, what made mm -hmm. you decide to go back to get your MBA? Well, it was something that I, you know, my brother, my, my, my older brother, his name is Travis. Uh, and you know, that's that's my, that's my role model. And so I looked up to my brother. He's about three. He's three years older than I am. You know, he was the reason that I got serious about football and in the ninth grade. And, you know, my, my older brother, he while he was at East Carolina University. You know, he, he was he was on a, a mission and he was on a football scholarship to East Carolina University. And while he was there, yeah, he he had a full ride and he was able to get his undergraduate degree and he got his master's degree while he was there. He got his MBA. And so. That was something that I just always wanted to do. You know, my, my, my big brother kind of sparked that desire for me. And I said, you know, OK, because it's, it's funny when somebody's in the same house with you and you see them do things, you're like, oh, by all means, of course I can do that. So for me, it was like, yeah, that's something that I can do as well, because, 
you know, I, I see this man, you know, every day. I know what he's made of. And so if he can do it, I can do it. But uh, additionally, I, I, I knew that I wanted to get into the player representation side of things. And I look at the athlete as a business, you know, to, and to represent guys in the NFL, if I'm going to get certified, I have to have a, a graduate degree. It could be a law degree. It could be an MBA. You know, it could be a, it could be, you could be an MD if you want, but I wanted to go the business route because I see players as a business and the law portion of it. That's, I'm not writing, I'm not drafting law. I'm not so, so for me, it's like, okay, contracts, I need to know how to negotiate. I need to know how to read the contract and understand, you know, the salary cap. But when it comes to business, I want to be effective on that end because all athletes, they're essentially entrepreneurs and they're a business. Each player on the field is a business. And so understanding that realm of the industry, I say, yes that's going to make me more effective with the athlete because of what I ultimately want to do with partnering with the athlete and then leveraging their brand so that they can generate and create ventures while they're playing, after they're playing, but also um, have that opportunity for these sponsorships and endorsements, as you mentioned. Yeah, I've, I've, I, and I, I mean, I noticed a huge, a huge aspect in that. A lot of, a lot of agencies uh, don't understand that portion of the transition side from being an athlete to being an entrepreneur. They don't look at it as a business. And, and, and that's what I try to tell the prospect athletes that come in here. I'm like, what you're doing is a business. The NFL looks at it as a business. Yes, you're still getting paid by them. They're, you know, they're, they're going to help you out with certain things, but it overall, it's a business. And you need to leverage that ability you have of, of being on that field and getting that free publicity while you're playing the game. Um, Cause that's going to help you um, find a good route to go. And, 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 and the hardest thing that I've seen from a lot of players is they do come out and they think that they can do it all themselves. And so that aspect of having people to help them in the necessary fields that, are going to help them make it to the next level. I mean, I look at large e-commerce stores like Nike um, or Adidas. I mean, they, they're not a one man show, you know what I mean? So to get there, you need to have a team around you and to get them to understand that and to get to um, really inherit the ability definitely will help them with that transition um, as they're making that, that switch over. Um, so what makes you feel like, I'm not going to put you on the spot here, but so let's just say athletes in general, what make athletes, what make athletes uh, great business owners? You know, I think uh, now when we look at, I don't have the numbers statistically, but <laughs> when they talk about some of the fortune 500 companies and might even be 50 fortune 50, when they look at a lot of these companies though, they are, being led by former athletes, maybe not professional athletes, but these were maybe collegiate athletes. And I think that that says a lot about the athlete and, 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 and what they're made of. And so when I look at it and I say, okay, well, why, why would that be? Why would, why would so many athletes, you know, be, uh, you know, in charge CEOs of these fortune 500 companies. Well, I think it all has to do with the way athletes get shaped and molded. And you and I both know if we want anything in life, if we want any sort of success, we want to accomplish anything. It's going to be hard, mm -hmm. Like there's no way around it. It's going to be hard. If you want to achieve anything, it's going to be hard. You have your own business. It is hard. It is, it is seven days a week, 365, 24-7. Fire comes up. You need to put it out. Mm -hmm. It is hard. And so that's what I think an athlete is aware of. And they're, you know, you're, you're not just an athlete on Sunday for an NFL player. You're not just an athlete on Sunday. Like it's, it's Sunday to Sunday. If it's not when you're studying film or lifting weights, 
It's when you're eating right and recovering right. All of those aspects of the game. It's 24-7, 365 to be a professional athlete. And we see that with the guys that are doing it at a high level. You can see that, no, this is, this is, this is, this is something that I'm committed to. And, and I understand that aspect of it, that it takes a high level of commitment. And this makes me think, you know, this morning, uh, a buddy and I were leaving the gym and, you know, and then we're talking and I'm explaining, you know, just, just, just going back and forth talking and, you know, and I gave him an example. I said, I said, you know, who's the best team in the NFL uh, last year? Obviously, we know that was the New England Patriots. I said, who was the worst team in the NFL? And based off a record, I think that was the Jacksonville Jaguars. Maybe it was the New York Jets. We said, we said the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> and I said, okay, uh, who are the quarterbacks? And so we know it's Tom Brady for, for, for the Bucs and probably Garner Minshew for – the Jaguars. And I said, I said, who, who had an easy season? He said, no one. I said, exactly. Neither one of them had an easy season. No matter if you are the worst team in the league or you are the best, it's going to be hard. Now, what was the difference between what was their hard that, that made it like, I'm sure if we look at a Tom Brady's life versus of the quarterbacks, it looks different. So there's a level of hard that you're going to have to say, hey, I'm willing to take on. And no matter which one you choose, no matter, no matter what way you decide to go. Like, for instance, being, being, being broke is hard. Being broke is hard. And being, being wealthy is hard. You just have to choose which one do you want to have. And so as an athlete, I think that we understand that it's hard regardless. Like to lo have a losing season, it's going to be hard. To have a winning season, it's going to be hard. And there is a commitment that, okay, I need to make as this athlete of, man, which hard am I going to take on? Which hard am I going to accept? Am I going to accept mediocrity? Or am I going to figure out, no, nah, I need to – I need to figure out what type of hard it's going to take for me to be great. That's why I love this field so much um, and, and why my passion moved to sports and working with athletes, because I feel like there's such a connection. There's such a connection between the business world and being a professional athlete. Um, is there so much, I mean, I see it in just everyday life with, with individuals and, 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 and how much they're willing to, try to make it. And that's why I was bringing up to you early the the fake gurus and, and all that saying, Hey, you can make a million tomorrow. Like that stuff doesn't even really work. Like it, it, it still shocks me that 90% of the community look at that stuff and go, I can, I can do this. It's like, no, there's still a lot of hard work. Even if you're, you're, you're paying them, they're, they're, you know, trying to just, I'm not going to say just take your money, but they're trying to the, leverage all that back on you with the way they offer you some of their services. And, and so it's, it is one of those, those things when I, when I, when I talk to athletes that you do have to say, Hey, listen, you have to be straightforward. This, it is hard. If this is what you want, you're going to be working hard for it. Just like you were in the game on that. And it, it, it goes back to fans and, and, and how fans portray football games compared to how, fan, how, how business owners uh, or people perceive business owners. It's the same concept as, they don't see that it takes everyone on the field. You know, there's the coaches, there's the training staff, there's the personal, the personal, there's all the things that players do outside the game that, that help leverage how they're doing inside the game. It's the same with business. You see a business, the same thing. You talk to a business about certain products or services. There's a lot that goes into all that, you know, like there's expenses and there's, you know, client management and there's, you know, employee management and keeping happy and making sure you're just staying afloat on both sides. So, you know, <laughs> it, it is crazy how much, how much of those connect. And so with that said, what, what makes you think, what are the things that you think athletes struggle with, with, uh, making that transition or, or, uh, struggles athletes make as business owners in, in, in particular? Yeah, and looking at it, 
and just from conversations that I've had with other players. And I look at it and say, a lot of it seems to be just a, a they're learning as business people. Like, and, and, and they almost, there's a, there's a level of, I don't want to say, there's a level of confidence that we have as athletes because of the success that we're used to having. And a lot of times that's all many of us have known. That's all we've known is success. And so we just think that, hey, we can waltz right in to the next thing and be successful. And that's not always the case. Not to say that it can't be, but that's not always the case. And it takes experience. And these business leaders that are out and they're thriving, you know, there's a level of experience that they have and that only gets acquired by time under tension, you know, within the business. And so some players have a history of business, you know, but, but the thing is, it's hard to, 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 to like get all those reps. You know, when you were, when you were a player, you had reps, you were getting reps that made you good at your sport. And in businesses, it's the same way. You have to be getting those reps. Yes, you can, you can hire people, but if you're going to be trying to start a business, you need to, yeah, you, you're going to have to devote your full attention to it. And so when I look at athletes, I say, okay, one thing is, yes, we don't realize that aspect of, okay, this is, this is going to take time and I, and, and I need to be able to give it my, my full time. And, and I need to anticipate that there are going to be highs and lows and prepare myself for those highs and lows. If I want to be a business leader, a business owner and, Additionally, I would say one thing that we probably need a, a better understanding, and this probably comes along with just doing business and getting those repetitions in business, is that uh, you, you don't have to put up all your money. I think we make that mistake as well. Like guys would think that they need to just put up their money, front their money. And you hear from guys that like, yeah, you know, you, you should use other people's money. Try to use other people's money leverage leverage your ability to have a good credit score and to have uh you know a good a good financial base built up to where you can leverage your assets to use other people's money to help you fund your business so there's i think that as as athletes before we jump out and think that let's be aggressive on on business there needs to be hey let me spend time. And that's what we, and that's what we learned in business school. Mm -hmm. Before you start any venture, do your research. Mm -hmm. it's, re, it's, it's research driven, like do your research and ask questions and figure things out and talk to people that have done it. I mean, that's the best thing you can do. Talk to people that have done it. You know, what's the best direction to go. And, and we have a lot of players in the locker room that post, especially after they're done, you know, that, that get into business and, and that you can talk to and find out from them, Hey, what did, what did you do? What advice do you have? What are some good steps to take? What are some things that I can do? Maybe while I'm playing, what are some things that I shouldn't do while I'm playing? Okay. What can I do once I retire? What shouldn't I do once I retire? Those are things that I think we have to be better about. And, and we know these things, like we know it's right there around us. We know that it takes reps to get good at something. We know that, communication, you know, talking to my teammates on the field to figure out, okay, well, you know, hey, well, what are we doing to attack? That's the same, like that same communication, you take that off the field as well. What am I doing so I know how to attack in this business? Find out from others. And it's funny you say that because I look at, I, 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 I somewhat have the same, same troubles when I talk to prospects because like I was saying earlier, how technical technology has grown so much that people just go straight out and they go, oh, I'm going to build this myself or I'm going to build my own social campaign or I'm just going to post day to day. And it's like when I was talking to you with when we were doing the PFRPA group, it's like, no, you have to do your research. Like the, the, the premise of what I do with some of my clients is we go through brand discovery, even website discovery, because we need to do that research up front because if not, you're just kind of, it's not a product, it's a service. You know, you need to figure all that stuff out before you're able to dive in and, and really 
leverage the money that you're putting forth in your business correctly. Um, and so I feel like it's a good, it's a good stepping stone for, I mean, I guess you could say this with anyone, just not athletes is, is value other people's, other people's ability to do what they do best. If that mm-hmm. makes sense, value mm-hmm. what they do. I see so much people coming in and even in my industry in particular, you have certain people that value, you know, the, 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 the social media side, but then they don't value the website or they'll value the, you know, the, the, the PR side, but then they don't value the digital marketing side. And it's like, it all works together, but you have to value each one efficiently so that it all works together. Um, and I think it's like, like you said, it's, it's, that's just part of business. The marketing side is just part of business, but it's definitely showcasing, I think for them to understand that value is there. You just have to find the right pieces and be able to put it together efficiently. Mm, yeah. I think that's, uh, you know, well said. And, you know, the thing about it is uh, that's something that athletes don't realize a lot of times as well is that you pay people for value. Mm-hmm. You pay people for value. And we are so used to, you know, getting, uh, you know, we just receive things like we, we, we're always used to things being given to, us, especially like on, on that side. Like when it comes to services and products, athletes can kind of get used to being entitled. Mm-hmm. You've been entitled and you've been, uh, you know, just nurtured and cared for and, and insulated your whole life. But it's like, no, in life, you pay for value. You know, the reason that the team is paying you is because you bring value to the organization from the product that you're putting out on the field for fans to watch and media uh, contracts that get written. So, no, great point. Yeah. Uh, what, what were they going to say there? I think that, uh, and, and, and that's, that's why I've pushed my business a little bit more, not to say harshly, but when you don't see the value in something, it doesn't do anyone a service because mm-hmm. that company that you're working with or something, if you're doing something for them for free, how are they going to pay the bills? So you, you have to look at it and it, well, if I'm getting something from them for free, they're going out of business or they're, they're spending more expenses on stuff. So they're not going to do as good of, it's just human nature. They're not going to do as good of a job on your stuff as they're going to do on the people that are understanding their value that's just that's just how society works in general um so yeah i definitely think it's a great point um overall so what are some things athletes can learn in regards to building their brands um from let's say let's say from you so to say from where you're at with with your your, all your nba knowledge yeah and you know the thing when i look at it uh I, like a lot of times academics, we can get too in the weeds. We can get too academic mm-hmm. where we want to try to, we want to try to blow your socks off with, with something that's uh, out of this world that you've never heard of. And what I'm finding out when it comes to branding and here, go, and this is a cool equation that my professor actually uses. His name is Bill Sanders. I'm gonna give him a shout out. Uh, Bill Sanders. He's been and he's been a he's been he's been a tremendous you know help to me as well. But I took his class last fall and sports marketing class. And Bill Sanders represents people like he's represented Yao Ming, Steve Nash, uh, Carmelo Anthony. Currently, he he's the athlete marketer for Clayton Kershaw, pitcher of the L.A. Dodgers, and he's also. Uh, uh, the sports marketer for Christian Yellick, the pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers. And he has an equation that is marketability equals talent plus success plus integrity plus charisma. The talent and success, I feel like, is it's there for most of these guys. It's just there. That's what you, you're, you're in the NFL. Yeah. You're talented, you're successful. The integrity and charisma. I think most of those guys have charisma. I think that charisma is just naturally existent because 
there is a there's an appeal towards them. And, and charisma isn't. I don't think that it, you know charisma. I won't say that it's it's just a natural. It's a given, but there is an allure because you are a celebrity. So you, you might not even be that charismatic, but because you're a professional athlete, you might seem to have a little charisma. Somebody somebody will somebody will identify with your message. Somebody will like the way that you deliver your message. An audience will accept your message. Perhaps, but the integrity piece, the integrity piece. Now that's the differentiator. And that's the piece where I like to focus on and say, that's where you set yourself apart. That's where you actually build a brand. Because as we know, a brand, when I think about brand, it's, it's basically, if I'm in a room with a with a group of people, and these are the work, these are these are these are the people that gossip. I'm in a room with a people, a, a room full of people that gossip. And then I leave out of that room. What's being said about me when I'm gone and in that room? What's being said about me? That's my brand. Whatever these people are saying about me, I'm like, that's my brand. So who am I? Am I a man of integrity? Am I a man of honor? Because it comes down to the quality of a man that I think really helps you bring in opportunities. Stuff, I feel stuff will find you if the quality of the man is there. If the quality of the man is there, you set yourself apart. Because as we know, it takes years to build something like trust something like a brand it takes years to build that mm -hmm. and all it takes 30 seconds or less for you to lose a big chunk of that mm -hmm. a big chunk of that brand and trust that you were able to build and generate so i don't need to get into the examples you know and i, and I think some brands have done a good job i think some brands that even in the midst of controversy with their athletes have done a good job of also building their brand by how, like for Nike, for instance, like by how they've stuck by people that have made mistakes. And I think that can be say something about your brand. The fact that you're like, hey, people mess up. We're all humans. Like we make some mistakes. We fall short. We, we hurt others with our actions. And when we do that, sometimes we need somebody to stick by us and not just leave us and kick us to the curb, kick us while we're down. Sometimes we need somebody to stick by. So I think even in the midst of adversity and controversy that a brand can still be established. So, but it all boils down to your integrity, your makeup, the quality of the man. And for me, it's that simple. If a man is focused on generating a quality representation of himself in society, good things will follow. Your brand will have the ability to blossom if you will plug it into the right things to get your brand awareness. No, that's, uh, that's, I love that. I think that's, I think that gr that's, that's great. Cause I, I mean, I a hundred percent agree with you. I mean, there's so many people out there that it depends on which, which field you're in, but they'll, they'll just think that their brand is their logo or their brand is, um, how, you know, people look at them when it, it is, it's very similar to it marketing. It's, it, it, you have to have the trust, you have to have the loyalty, you have to have the integrity, you have to have the, 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 the branding on the, on the, on the, you know, the visual side, like it all kind of works together in, in some way, form or another. And social media has played a huge, had, I mean, years, years ago, 10 to 15 years ago, you know, social media wasn't a thing. So, if, you know, an athlete had, said something, it would usually be over PR, which was fully controlled, or it would be, you know, over, you know, them just talking to some friends. I, 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 since I grew up in a small town, I put it very similar to the small town. Social media is a lot like the small town effect, you know, and mm -hmm. it is, it's, you know, you say something in a small town and, and man, it spreads like wildfire. And next thing you know, it's completely awful. Social media is the same thing, you know, and that's where I feel bad for a lot of athletes because they don't understand that, 
you put something up and some, it just takes one person to take a screenshot of it. And, and not just that fans, nothing against fans. There's, there's always a great number of fans, but you don't see it from both sides. And so I see posts all the time where fans are saying something mean to the athletes. And it's like, you know, the athletes just trying to survive here. Like the athletes, it's, it's you have to think it's a business, you know, for both. And so the athletes are doing what they feel is necessary too. And yeah, sometimes they post wrong things or, you know, 90% of the time they don't think they're posting something bad and, and somebody else perceives it as bad and they have to still go out and apologize, which is the integrity of going, Oh, you know, I'm still going to apologize because I hurt people, even though I, I realize and being able to take that to heart, I think it is for, for people is probably something that could get better over time. It's just being able to understand that people are, you know, athletes are humans too you know, um, being able to understand that integrity. So I, I want to thank you for being on. Um, why don't we end off on how you feel like you, and you kind of mentioned at the beginning, how do you feel like you can help athletes um, move, moving forward um, with what you're doing with your career? Certainly. So for myself, you know, I'm having fun currently uh, talking about things in the area of athlete marketing and uh, branding on the side for the high school athlete and the college athlete. And, and I say athlete, but I mean football player. That's, mm -hmm. that's where I'm placing my focus and carving out my niche in the industry. And so I'm having fun uh, educating guys on branding themselves and opportunities that are coming up for college football players to take advantage of their name, image, and likeness with the new NCAA rules. Yeah. And so for myself, if you're a young athlete and I have a, I have a few guys that I keep in, in contact with daily, pretty much, the college football players, and I just like to be on that side of, yeah, let me, let me, let me, let me be a guide or, you know, let me, let me be encouragement. Let me be inspiration for these young men that have that desire to go and play professionally. And additionally, I want to provide you with advice and uh, you know practical things that you can use as principles for building your own brand so that you can take advantage of those opportunities coming up. And, and above all, I realize that the impact that I need to have on young men that are playing college football, that are playing high school football, the impact that needs to be made on them is the quality of the man and how I'm leading my life and how I, how, 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 how we all need to lead our lives from a standpoint of, you know, let's be quality individuals. Let's be quality people that are, we are just looking out for ourselves. We aren't just in it for our own personal gain. We, we want to see other people rise up. We want to see other people thrive. We want to look out for others. We want to be honorable in the way that we live. We want to have integrity. And so that's how I want to help athletes. If you're following me on my social, if you're trying to get more about what I'm doing, you know, I have my website, DerekCox.org, where that's specifically a platform where I'm trying to give advice and practical pieces of advice that players can put into play for themselves to help brand themselves. Because if you're in high school, you're in college, you have that opportunity. And I want to be somebody that, hey, just can help you. And so that's all I'm trying to be right now in this current space is help. I'm just trying to be help and be consistent with that, being intentional and deliberate about helping these young men that play football because I've been there. I've had the experience and above all, I want guys to have the same experience of making it to the NFL and, and more where your career you're, you're satisfied with and, and your post career you're satisfied with, because when you get done with football, it should be the best time of your life. Mm -hmm. It should be the best part of your life because you're on to the next thing. Football is just a puzzle piece for guys. This is just a puzzle piece. Playing the NFL was just a puzzle piece to the bigger puzzle picture that's gonna get built. Yeah. But use this puzzle piece to help you move forward 
to the best parts of the rest of your life. Well, I appreciate that, man. That's, that's definitely inspiring. Uh, hopefully we have a lot of, we have a lot of kids and, and again, I'll, I'll ask you, what are your, what are your handles and what are your, what is your website again? So people can yeah, find you. So my, so my website, you can find me at DerekCox.org. And on that, that's where I'm putting up content about branding for, for football players. And then you can also find me on Twitter at Derek, which is D E R E K underscore Cox, which is C O X 21. So Derek underscore Cox 21. You can find me on Instagram at Derek Cox 21. Yeah. Derek man. Cox 21. And then Keep you going. can, uh, I'm on YouTube. Excuse me. I'm on. I'm on. I have a YouTube channel as well. So that's Derek Cox YouTube channel. I also have a. Uh, I have my LinkedIn, Derek Cox, and then I have my Facebook, Derek Cox. So trying to be out there on all these platforms. The most <laughs> TikTok as well. I'm on. TikTok. I haven't done much on TikTok, but I, I do have a TikTok. That's you know, TikTok is perfect for if you're reaching the high schoolers and the college. That's probably the perfect channel for you. That's it. So. <laughs> I'm trying to hit all of them. All right. Well, thanks again for being on the Brand Power Analysis. Yes, sir. Thank you, Zachary, for having me, man. I look forward to communicating more and finding out more about yourself and diving into your resources that you're putting out. Thank I you. I appreciate it.